Hi there. Welcome. I'm Ryan Chow. I'm the president of Rails to Trails Conservancy. And we're so happy to have you here for the fifth anniversary of the Great American Rail Trail. So I recognize some of you. We were in this exact spot exactly five years ago uh, to celebrate the launch of the Great American Rail Trail. And what it is, is it's the first multi-use trail that will span the country over 3,700 miles, allowing anyone to bike, to walk, to take a wheelchair completely separated from traffic between Washington, D.C. and Washington State. In total, 50 million people live within 50 miles of the Great American, 50 million. And what's really is exci exciting is that the trail is expected and is already generating incredible investment in the communities the trail passes through. It's estimated $230 million in spending for the communities right along the trail. For us, we do a lot of advocacy for federal funding, but the Great American, we think, is the best example of the value and return on investing federal funding in trails and active transportation. And perhaps one of the best examples is a brand new program, the Active Transportation Infrastructure Investment Program that was just launched recently, and it's the first program that will fund connecting trails into networks, just like the Great American. We're really grateful to many of you advocates and members of Congress and elected officials who've worked really hard to create this program and are working really hard to make sure that it's fully funded in 2025. So we have a great group of guests, and I'd like to first welcome some of those important elected officials that are helping all of this work to connect America by trail. First, I'd like to invite Matt Cartwright, Congressman from Pennsylvania. Thank you, Ryan. And uh, thanks for giving me the mic first. I have to get to a hearing, but uh, I wanted to say a couple words. This is uh, this is the uh, uh, the inception of the, the fourth trip, I understand, uh, and it's the fifth anniversary of starting the program. But it's the 220th anniversary of something else that this whole operation put me in mind of, and that's the Lewis and Clark expedition. Now, it didn't leave from Washington, it left from Missouri, but it was commissioned by President Jefferson in Washington, and it was May 1804 that they started the trip. Uh, and so that makes it, it makes it this month, 220 years ago, that, uh, that Captain Meriwether Lewis and Lieutenant William Clark, both veterans, set out on the Lewis and Clark expedition that ended up in Washington State. So I'm here to say congratulations to the people who signed up for this ride. Thank you for your service. Thank you to Susie Williamson from my district in Milford, Pennsylvania. That's Major Susie Williamson to you. And, and I want to say best of luck and congratulations to everybody. This is a wonderful therapeutic exercise and I hope it gets bigger and bigger every year. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Congressman. Next, I'd like to invite Senator Tom Tillis from North Carolina. Well, uh, thanks, everybody. A special thanks to Alan Megginson, who's going to be running representing North Carolina. Um, I, um, about uh, 10 years ago, I did a 240-mile ride over three days. You all make me look pretty lame. Um, I'm not even sure if I could do that 10 years later, but. Uh, but I really appreciate the fact that um, that rails to trails created. I was thinking when I moved, I'm, a, I'm an avid mountain biker. I should say the reason I got into politics is because of a single track mountain biking trail. I went before a town commission to build an environmentally sustainable single track trail down in North Carolina when I moved there. I got hoodwinked and ultimately serving on the town commission. Um, that project I put on the back burner now later, four years, six years later, I'm Speaker of the House and they finally built that mountain bike trail. But for that mountain bike trail, I probably wouldn't have been in politics and I ride it still today. Um, but man, what a feat, 3,700, y'all are about two weeks into this, y'all are gonna be hoping you were like Lewis and Clark and could have started in Missouri. Um, 
but what you're doing is amazing. Just I mean, anybody that's ridden just a little bit understands what these men and women are about to set out to do. And I will tell you, it's an accomplishment in and of itself. Um, but it's, it's also an important statement to everybody else. One of the reasons why I wanted to build that single track trail is I wanted to trick people into getting outdoors. You know, it's the reason I play disc golf more than I play ball golf. You know, ball golf, you gotta dress up. Disc golf, you're hiking through woods and you're having fun. You all are actually maybe tempting more people to get out and realize just how wonderful it is to be outdoors, to camp outdoors, to ride every day and to ride for months. Um, so I, and I also think that that, that sending the message that physical health and these sort of activities are intrinsically linked to behavioral health and mental health. There is nothing more mind clearing for me in the job that I have over here than getting out in the woods, getting on a bike, but just leaving it all out on the trail. And that's what you guys are going to do for the next couple of months. So for Rails to Trails, thank you for building a network of trails that tip more people to get out there and understand the joy of the outdoors and the, the joy of good hard work. I wish you a lot of success. You're going to have some pain and some muscle cramps and other things along the way, but your courage um, to go out and set out to do it, you're going to accomplish it, and I'm going to be very proud of you. I look forward to seeing you on the other side. Thank you all. God bless you. Test, 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 test. Thank you, Senator. So as the, um, as uh, Congressman Cartwright, Senator Tillis just mentioned, we're here to celebrate, of course, the great progress of the Great American Rail Trail. It's 55% complete now. Pretty soon you'll be able to go from Washington, D.C. all the way to Indiana without coming across a car. It's closing rapidly thanks to all the amazing advocacy. But um, in addition to celebrating progress, we are launching some amazing veterans on an epic journey. So these seven veterans will go from Washington, D.C., to Maryland, West Virginia, through Pennsylvania, Ohio, through Indiana, Illinois, Nebraska, Iowa, Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, Washington, and finally, and at the Pacific Ocean. It's gonna be an amazing journey. Uh, I've done parts of it. I'm kind of doing state by state over the years. And someday, um, if my boss Brandy lets me, I'll try to do the whole thing at one time. But I'm certainly at admiring and uh, a bit jealous of of what you all are accomplishing. So I'd like next to introduce our great partner who's made this possible, John Gobin from Warrior Expeditions. But first, let me just say one thing. Um, of the, the veterans, the riders, today is John Wirth's birthday. Woo! Starting on your birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday, John, and I'd like to introduce Sean. Uh, thank you so much. So my name is Sean Gobin, I'm a Marine Corps veteran, and uh, Warrior Expeditions started with me 12 years ago. Uh, coming back from my third combat deployment, I was in a real dark place, and I realized that. And so my last day in the Marine Corps, I drove out of the back gate of Camp Lejeune, North Carolina with some gear I had laying around the garage, and I drove to Springer Mountain, Georgia, and spent the next four and a half months hiking all 2,195 miles of the Appalachian Trail from um, Georgia to Maine. And it just started as a uh, you know a personal bucket list item, but over the next four and a half months, three things happened uh, that honestly saved my life. The first was doing the trail with a fellow veteran I was deployed to Afghanistan with, who I was able to talk to while I was processing everything, uh, who kind of understood what we went through and what we're going through now as we're trying to adjust back into the civilian world. Uh, the second thing was having the time and space in nature for four and a half months, being stuck in your own head while you're hiking for eight to 12 hours a day, and you're able to just decompress and process everything and put it away. And then the third thing was all the amazing people I met through the communities along the way. You know, after three combat deployments, uh, I, I started having a really cynical view of people and humanity and society. But after meeting so many wonderful people over the course of four and a half months, it helped rewire my brain uh, and reestablish that basic faith in humanity that I had lost over the years. So when I finished the Appalachian Trail, I started grad school, but then had the idea of, well, this was so therapeutic and helpful for me, I wonder if we could create some kind of program and organization for other veterans to do these long distance trips to help them transition from their military service. And so 
Warrior Expeditions was born the next year, and we started with hiking programs along all the long distance hiking trails uh, across the country. But then we had the crazy idea to start doing long distance paddle and biking trips as well. So we ended up with uh, eight long distance hikes that we did. We paddled the entire length of the Mississippi River and we would bike across the country. Uh, the first few years, our warrior bike program was along the Transamerica Trail, but it's along roads. And so some of the feedback we got from the veterans over the years was that the traffic was not really part of the therapeutic experience. And so we were looking for more of an off-road route. And as I was driving home from one of our bike kickoffs, I saw a news alert that the Great American Rail Trail had just been established and it was already over 50% off-road. So that was the solution. So the next year, uh, we started riding the Great American Rail Trail. And then every year it gets better and better as they add more and more trail. And I'm super excited to come here one year and launch the veterans knowing that the trail is gonna be 100% complete from Washington, D.C. all the way to the Pacific Ocean. Woo! Woo! And so with that, I am super appreciative of all the work that goes in to making this trail from the Rails Trails Conservancy, their partners, our public officials, and keep up the great work. And again, I look forward to, to seeing that, that trail connected. Thank you very much. So this is a big week in DC, of course, the big event here and the, the launch of this awesome journey. It was a big day yesterday. So some of us here in the crowd were able to attend the outdoor um, the outdoor recreation roundtable event that many estimated was the largest assemblage of industries of the outdoor recreation sector and of the advocacy sector all together yesterday really uniting to figure out how do we make outdoor recreation an even bigger priority for the federal government and for people the outdoor recreation industry contributes one trillion dollars a year to the economy um, one thing that was a theme that ran through that event was the importance of outdoor recreation offices and directors at the states across the country. And so some of these good looking people in these really cool t-shirts have to be outdoor recreation directors from across the country. So thank you all so much for joining. You do so much for not only trails, but all the things that allow people to get outdoors and stay healthy. And an important partner along the route, we have representatives from Pennsylvania, from West Virginia here, is Wyoming and so I'm really happy to have Patrick Harrington the director of outdoor recreation the outdoor recreation office in Wyoming here to join us well hello friends uh, standing in such a beautiful maybe iconic spot I'm torn between starting my remarks uh, with uh, hello my fellow Americans uh, or a joke about Colorado. Uh, and so I'll just say I'm Patrick uh, from the best square state of Wyoming. Uh, I am the state's outdoor recreation director. Uh, the outdoor recreation economy in Wyoming uh, it is a $2 billion industry, 4.1% uh, of our state GDP and 5.6% of state employment. Uh, Wyoming is, is truly putting its money where its mouth is. In the last two legislative sessions, uh, we've passed the Outdoor Recreation and Tourism Trust Fund. Uh, this trust fund, when fully realized, will be a $200 million trust uh, for outdoor recreation infrastructure all across the state. I, uh, I'm also here, uh, as Ryan just mentioned, uh, representing Wyoming as part of the confluence of states. So again, another shout out to my fellow state directors uh, and the good work they're doing and uh, our funding partners, uh, ORR, REI, uh, the F Corporation and, and others that are around. So the Great American Rail Trail, I'll, I'll start with a quick story. Uh, I'm from a really small town, 1,800 people in north central Wyoming, called Grable. It's the only stoplight in the entire county at, you know, the intersection of Main Street and First Street. There's a, it's built down in a, in a river bottom, and in the early 1900s, the river flooded, wiped away the town, and they started over. Uh, and in doing so, Army Corps of Engineers, Bureau of Rec, someone uh, built a levee through town, and, you know, as kids, we called it the dike. On one side was the town, on the other side was a little bit of land and, uh, and a really deep cottonwood forest that had been choked by, uh, by Russian olive trees. We played back there a ton as kids and it was some wilderness that was a block away from my house. 
you know, I, I thought it was a pretty cool thing, um, but I, I don't know that it really served the community. And in fact, a lot of my stories as a kid of getting in trouble started with, so I was behind the dike and now that uh, that levee through town on top, it's paved and it's part of the Great American Rail Trail. The cottonwood forest has been restored back to native species, uh, and it really serves as, a, as an anchor in that community. And I think that's a great example of what the Great American Rail Trail will do for our communities, uh, particularly those in Wyoming. So Wyoming has about 500 miles of opportunity. Uh, that's what I keep telling folks, that every, every mile is an economic development opportunity. Uh, this will make a huge difference. Uh, one of my charges as Wyoming's Outdoor Recreation Director is to slow down the flow of tourists on their way to Yellowstone. It sort of works the same way as like a, a dam would in the West, uh, where water is the limiting resource, but that's really what drove uh, modern economies uh, to settle the West. So we'll see, uh, as this rolls out, we'll see small towns uh, growing and embracing this trail. Uh, businesses, hotels, B&Bs popping up around those. Uh, and, and all together, you know, the, the projected estimates are almost $13.5 million a year in economic impact from the Great American Rail Trail, 150 jobs, which uh, in Wyoming, this is very significant. It really will matter. I want to, uh, uh, as I stand here today, uh, we just finished a grant making cycle in Wyoming and uh, have yet to make announcements, but I'm happy today to announce that our our partners and the folks really leading the charge in Wyoming for the Great American Rail Trail, the Platte River Trails Trust, uh, we're, we're awarding them a grant to complete two additional miles outside of Casper, Wyoming. Yeah. Thank you. It's really exciting to have that as one of our first funded projects. Uh, I think it speaks a lot to the work that uh, Kevin, Marianne, the rest of the Rail Trail Conservancy are doing. They show up in Wyoming uh, and they meet with local elected officials local community members, and their presence in our state is moving the needle. Uh, in a really turfy western state, that's what it takes. Uh, so we can't thank them enough for joining us in Wyoming, for thinking of us along the route, for developing a route that hits some of Wyoming's smallest, farthest out towns. They don't have these opportunities often. We have a lot of work left. We're only about three and a half percent of the way done in Wyoming. Um, you guys will enjoy some, some good highway miles in the state. Uh, maybe I can sweeten the deal by meeting you at the border with some ice cream. Um, we'll connect. Yeah. I, I know it matters. Uh, so with that, I just I want to thank the Rail Trail Conservancy. I'm excited to see this, uh, this roll out across our state. We're full force behind it uh, and, and are doing everything we can in the State House in Wyoming to champion it. And with that, I'll, I'll, I'll just conclude. Thank you all. Thank you, Patrick. Trail gaps are miles of opportunity. I love it. I'm stealing that one. Um, so our final speaker represents the importance of private-public partnerships and one of the best investors and forces for good in the outdoor recreation industry, and that's REI. REI is an amazing company we all enjoy. Um, probably all of us are members, but they do so many things beyond just um, selling products. They are really a mission-based organization. A great example recently is Outside in Five, a campaign they've launched which seeks to get everyone outdoor access within five minutes of their home, which is very much what we try to do at Rails to Trails, which is finding the most convenient, most equitable, most accessible way to get outside and be active. Um, it's an inspiring campaign and it's just the most recent. I think what's really also just says so much is REI's Cooperative Action Fund, where they're dedicating a percentage of sales to invest in all kinds of projects and investments that promote equity and access to outdoors, including the Great American Rail Trail. One of their first investments in the Cooperative Action Fund was to continue to advance the Great American Rail Trail. So I'm really pleased to have Talby Harrison here with us from REI, and welcome Talby. Well, thank you, uh, and thanks, Ryan. Um, as Ryan mentioned, I'm Taldi Harrison. I have the honor of being the Director of Government Affairs for REI Co-op. Hopefully you're familiar with the Co-op and you might even be a member. For those that are not, we are the nation's largest consumer co-op. We have 187 stores, one about a mile from here if you forgot your sunglasses like I did today. 
um, as well as 15,000 employees and an amazing 24 million members across the country. And as a values-driven co-op, we're really on a mission to help enable a life outdoors for everyone. However, uh, today in the US alone, one third of Americans do not have access to a trail or green space within ten, a 10 minute walk of their home, according to data from the Trust for Public Land. And at REI, we really believe that we can do better as a nation and that it's an imperative that we do and that we need to start thinking about time outside as a necessity and not a luxury. And whether it's for the mental health benefits that Sean mentioned and that many enjoy in this crowd, I know, and some of, most of you are gonna be on a bike today, uh, or the economic uh, impact that you just heard about from Pat. Every person in every community should have the ability to easily opt outside. And so to tackle this access gap, the co-op and our community are supporting community-driven solutions to create more parks and green space close to home, as well as more trails and just greater opportunities for everyone to get outside. And that's why we're so excited to be here today and be celebrating five amazing years of the Great American Rail Trail. Uh, as you heard, 50 million people live within five, 50 miles of this trail. And this will be just a really great spine going from Washington to Washington and helping us tackle closing that access and nature gap. When completed, people across the nation are gonna be able to access the trail, but also that sense of community, the green space, parks, uh, schools, and even grocery stores that come along with that connectivity. To realize this vision, we need all of your help from Capitol Hill to state houses across the country. Uh, public policy and investment in trails are what helps make this happen. And so I call on all of you to act now. As was mentioned, we have the Cooperative Action Fund. We also have a Cooperative Action Network, uh, which is helping to enable our, our members and community to take action on policy issues that matter. And you know, we were really heartened to see the recent action on the active transportation infrastructure investment program, but now we need Congress to step up and fund it. Uh, so if you haven't already reached out to your member, go to rei.com slash act and send an email right now before you get on your bike today. It'll take you two minutes to say, let's fund these trails. And so on behalf of our 24 million members and many of you standing here today, uh, we just want to thank you for your continued uh, passion, dedication, and hard work to help close the access gap and make trail connectivity a part of our American heritage. Thank you guys so much. All right. Well, we're about ready to wish the veterans the Warriors, good luck on their trip. Um, in the course of these comments, it's been, what, 20 minutes? It went from raining to high winds to now calm, and the skies are open. So maybe a preview of all that you can experience, but also a great way to start. Uh, last thing I'd, I'd just like to note is that there are two important um, leaders who weren't able to join today. That's Governor Eric Holcomb of Indiana and Sen Senator Joni Ernst of Iowa. They both recorded videos, though, wishing you all well. Hello, Indiana Governor Eric Holcomb here, and it is indeed a pleasure to join you, albeit virtually, to celebrate the Great American Rail Trail's fifth anniversary. This project truly demonstrates how trails can connect us to each other and the rest of the nation. and also link us to greater opportunities along the way. That's why it's such an honor to play our role on such a transformational project and mission. So thank you. Your partnership has been such a tremendous asset to our state, and we couldn't be more grateful for your commitment and support in building out our trail system in Indiana. And we're so proud of our place on the Great American Rail Trail, a route that connects Washington, D.C. to Washington State, with 220 miles of the trail 
in Indiana. And by the way, over half of our portion is already completed, I am proud to report. That's because together we are trailblazing towards cross-country connectivity, and you can count on Indiana to get our job done. As we look out all across our great state, border to border, we are making progress in bringing highways jobs, scaling up Hoosiers, making sure we have the right technology, and that our infrastructure is in place to make Indiana a great place to live, work, study, play, and stay here to raise a family. And we know that trails are a huge component to the quality of life in Indiana. And we aren't taking our eye off the prize or our shared goal for one nanosecond. It's why we've invested $180 million in our Next Level Trails initiative here in Indiana, the largest infusion of state trail funding to communities in our state's history to ensure every Hoosier ultimately lives within five miles of a trail and trail access. Again, I'm just so proud of what we are building here together and what it will mean for our economic progress, for our families, for our physical health and our overall wellness, not to mention the multitude of recreational opportunities that will ultimately be realized. From trails to trees to our public lands, we're preserving and protecting the great outdoors for future Hoosiers and for our future visitors alike to explore and enjoy it all for generations to come. So once again, thank you for the work that you all do day in and day out in the name of conservation nationwide. And again, please remember you can count on Indiana's commitment to remain your steadfast partner. Enjoy today's celebration. Hi folks, this is Iowa Senator Joni Ernst. Well, I'm sorry I can't be there in person today. I want to commend each of you for your participation in and support of the Warrior Bike Ride across the country. To the veterans embarking on this 3,700 mile journey along the Great American Rail Trail, thank you for your selfless service to our country and for stepping up to lead the way on this expedition. Today and every day, we thank you for your incredible commitment to our nation. To those from the Rails to Trails Conservancy and Warrior Expeditions, I'd like to extend my sincere gratitude for the work you do to help veterans transition from their wartime experiences using long distance outdoor expeditions. As a combat veteran who served for 23 years in our military, I understand all too well the sacrifices made by our brave service members. Your mission to help our warriors transition back to civilian life makes all the difference in the lives of service members and their families. Thank you all for fighting for our veterans once they return home. I'll continue fighting alongside you on their behalf in the halls of Congress. Safe travels as you set off on this journey and enjoy the beautiful trails in my home state of Iowa. May God bless all those who have served and continue to serve the great United States of America. Thank you all again for joining and let's wish these warriors good luck as they start to head west.